There we go, and good evening. <laughs> All right, so um, the point of tonight is to review the, uh, the pictures that we took at the Fabulous Freckles session, and we all got there. We all did the same model. We all had the same lighting. We all had good camera equipment, and yet, interestingly enough, what I find interesting when I come up from these things is I see photos, and I'm going, wow, that's really neat. Were you at the same place as I was? <laughs> because some of the photos look drastically different. So it's it's always interesting to see what people sort of do and, and, and how they, they represent uh, their, their, their images. So uh, let me just bring myself up as the, the key thing here. So um, what I'm going to do is walk you through my work workflow. So I just took the images from the camera and I just loaded them up in Lightroom, but I haven't done anything else with them. So I'm going to show you how I process, you know, hundreds of images after a typical uh, shoot event and uh, sort through them very fairly quickly, find out which ones are worth keeping, which ones are worth editing. And then once I've done that, then I turn around and uh, we'll, we'll sort of get you into some of the editing. Most of the editing I do is in Lightroom. It doesn't uh, go to Photoshop. If I need to do something very, very specific, I'll flip it over to Photoshop. And then sometimes if I need to do something extra special, I may flip it into one of the plugins. So I'll show you some of the plugins that I use. Ask questions as we go along. This is very informal. So uh, I, I see Elaine's got her, 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 uh, her microphone muted, but uh, that's fine. I mean, just Whenever you want to talk, just hit the space bar and it'll automatically unmute you temporarily if you want to uh, just chime in. But uh, just I have a chat window open, so if you want to send something uh, privately, you can always send it as a chat and I'll try to keep an eye on that. But uh, there's a small group here, so we can just chime in verbally. All right, so let's uh, flip. I'll share my screen and I'm going to share screen one. There we go. And you should be seeing the uh, meetup event. Does that uh, does that work for everybody? Is that what you're seeing? Yep. Yep. Okay. Good. All right. So this is the event. Uh, the model we shot with Kit was Katie, and we did a little bit about how to pose her with lighting considerations. We talked about catch lights. We talked about how to manage the background, uh, and we we. Had a couple of different looks for her her uh, her outfit uh, we had an outfit change. So we'll talk today about the workflow session in terms of how do we process these images. So it's general image processing, so overall light balance and, and sharpening and so on and so forth. Then how I share my proofs with uh, a typical client or model. And by the time I get to sharing the proofs, I've just done some very general work. I haven't done a whole lot to to the images. It's you know overall brightening, <clears throat> overall sharpening, that kind of stuff. And then once the client is selected, you know, oh, I really like you know number twenty three eighteen. Uh, then I may go in and, and do some more retouching of, of you know the skin or removing some blemishes or some stray hairs or whatever. So I think Vu mentioned he wanted to talk about stray hairs and stuff like that. So we'll. We'll talk about those, but if you guys have questions specifically as you go along, let me know. So flipping over to Lightroom. Oops. All right. So here's the, the actual, uh, I'll just move these names out of the way. <clears throat> so I obviously took a picture of some carnations before we got going. So that happened to be on my film reel when I got going. So big deal. So I'm going to go and look at all the pictures that have no rating. Okay, so right now I'm looking at anything that's unrated, so it has a value of zero. There's no stars on this item. So I'm just going to say one because it's, it's garbage. And in my rating system, one is garbage. I really don't need it. Uh, two is, is it's, it's, it's relevant to, to the, the, the image, uh, the, the shoot. So um, I probably don't need it. I probably don't want it, but I'm not going to get rid of it right away. Uh, an example is, let's say I've got a group shot in, in, in a wedding and one person's got their eyes closed. Well, I probably can't use that, but I don't want to throw it away right away because I might have another picture where someone else has got their, their eyes closed and now I'm going to have to sort of steal a face from one and put it in the other and I have to make a picture that works. But my ideal is, first of all, to get rid of anything that's, that's uh, not very usable. So an image like this one, I mean, she's got a bit of raccoon eyes and whatever. It's still possibly usable, so I'll give that a three. And I'm just going to keep going like that and giving things, you know, a three uh, as I go along. When I'm done, I'm going to see how many threes I've got. And if I promise the client 200 proofs, if I should hopefully have at least 200 number threes. 
Uh, then I'll also go through and find from the threes, you know, which ones are the best ones. If I have too many proofs, you know, I've got 200 proofs, I promised her only 50. I'll go through the threes again and upgrade some of them to a four because those are the ones I really want to share with the client. And a five is like, oh my gosh, this is really great. I want to put it in my portfolio. So anything that's a five is really obviously a keeper for, for a long time. It's in my portfolio. Four is for the client and, and I'll keep that. And client jobs I usually keep maybe about 10 years or so. Uh, the threes, I will hang on just in case the client needs something, you know, oh, so-and-so passed away. I've got any more pictures of so-and-so or whatever. So I'll make sure that the threes are, are you know, keep, keep them around for a little bit longer. The twos, pretty much as soon as I've given them the proofs and they're happy and they're starting to ask me for the, their selections, I get rid of the twos and the ones I can get rid of right away. So in terms of archiving, I can say get rid of all the pictures that I've taken, which are level two and below. Uh, which are more than, let's say, two years old. And I can just go through my entire library and just get rid of those things. So in Lightroom, I can just hit the number three or two or four. I can hit the, the, the arrow here. I can just say, oh, this is a three, and I'll just kind of just click on the three. And now I move on to the next one. Uh, I really don't like that shadow on her forehead, so I'm just going to give that a two. And this is kind of okay, so I'll give that a three. And I get an automatic advance because I've turned something on here called... Uh, frame advance or something like that there's a feature that that says auto advance here it is so i've turned that on if you find that you don't want to advance something you have to hit shift in three to, to keep it where it is but uh, i like to have just the automatic advance because i like to go through things so i'm going to go through things fairly fast so there's a three see here's another three that's very similar and here's another one that's kind of the same i might be actually tempted to give this one a four but i'm going to do that in a second pass because sometimes i have four or five images that are very similar and if I start giving this one a four, then I look at the next one, I go, oh, that's even better. But then I have to go back and forth. So I just prefer to do things in multiple passes. So that's a three. And that's kind of boring expression with the eyes. That's a two. I don't know what she was doing there. She was waiting. So that's a two. And she looks mad. That's a two. Maybe here a three. You know, that's pretty dark, but that's okay. We'll talk about that later. So we'll give that a three. That's not too bad. Three. I like that one even better, you see. So I'm not going to go back and change them. I'm just going to keep giving them threes and then that way I can just get through them fairly quickly. Of course that's my advice. In reality what ends up happening is I, I'm going through these things and once in a while I see one that I really like and I start playing with it before I've even gotten through them all. That's a two, that would be a three, that's another three, that's another three. So I'm trying to just do twos and threes here as I go along. That's, she looked mad there, that's their three. Uh, three. So if, if it's you know properly exposed it's not too bad. I wasn't taking a picture of my my, my shoe or something silly, then, then it's, it probably falls into the three categories. And uh, I see some that you know could probably be cropped or something like that that looks mad again, but you know, I'll give that one a two. After a while, I start to see I've got enough of the pictures that look pretty good. So I start to... Uh, now that one was nice. So I start to, to feel a little more comfortable about giving things a two because I go, oh, that's enough. But as soon as you change outfits or change location or whatever, and then you go, oh, well, gee, maybe she wants something with, you know, this outfit instead of that outfit. So you, you got to try to be consistent in terms of your, 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 uh, what you're doing. And that's kind of, don't like that one. That's a two. That's a two. And that's a two. That's a three. <laughs> there you go. Sometimes I actually take a funny expression and send it to them. And they say, hey, this is for your Facebook page. But then I just give it a two and then move on. And three, three. See, now here I'm testing my lights. Uh, I actually had the flash in the umbrella, and I wanted to see whether the flash was just going to show a little white spot in the center or whether it's going to illuminate the entire umbrella because I was making sure the umbrella was properly positioned. So that's going to be a, a one. I don't need that. I'm testing my hand here because she's busy changing, so I'm just making sure my hand is properly exposed so that gives me an idea of how bright my flash is. So my flash, my hand here is just a little bit overexposed, but then she stepped in and sure enough, she's a little exposed as well. So I'll get rid of that one. Her hand was in front of the picture anyways. And then here, they'll give this one a three, and another three, another three, another three. And I can go through these pretty fast. And so I, if I'm doing a wedding or something, I, oops, now this is whatever, I don't know what. And then three, three. See, this is right in front of her face. I'm pretty li unlikely to use that one. That's going to be a two. And that's a three, and that's a three, and that's a three, and that's a three. Well, that, well, never mind. That last one was kind of a funny expression, but I'm not going to bother going back. If you had to go back, I can just unclick this, 
Now all of a sudden you can see these at the bottom, three, 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 three. I'll take and go back one, make that a two, and then I can go back to all of my unrated. But it, it's too much trouble to go back and forth. Sometimes I just I just leave them. And it depends how much uh, of a, in a hurry I am. So there's a whole bunch of threes there. That one's kind of like the least in the face. I'll make that a two. Obviously, cut her with her eyes closed. That's a two. Three, 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 three. There's another eyes closed. Two, three, three, three. And by the time I'm done here, I have kind of a rough idea of, you know, how good or successful the session was. I mean, if I sat here and went three, 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 and all, ever, all along I was going, that should be a four, that should be a four, that should be a four. <laughs> I know I've had a pretty good session. And there, there. And I guess we skipped over that one way back when, and I don't think that one's too sharp. Oops. Yeah, it is. I mean, it looks those eye shadow that those, I can see every one of those eyelashes. So let's just give one a three as well. So when I'm done, I can just come over here and I can say, show me only the threes. And what I'm left here is only the threes. So let's say there's a batch here that I have that are all very similar. I can hit the letter N or this, uh, this view over here called survey view. And it brings all of them up together. And I say, okay, well, well these are very similar. Uh, let's just, you know, she obviously likes this pose. She's done it a few times. So let's figure out which one of these, is, you know, kind of looks looks best. And they're all very similar. I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference. So I'll just pick this one arbitrarily and make that one a four. Okay, so that's now disappeared because it's no longer a three. And I've just said, show me the threes. I could say, show me the threes and above by turning this into a greater than or equal to. And now I'm seeing any three or four. So you can see the uh, these images are together. And what, what's, uh, sorry, I'm just making sure I want to go back to G mode. Oh, it's set by capture time. I want to capture, I want to put these in file name sequence. So that way they appear. So here's my three, there's my four, there's my three. All right, so those, those were, were my, my images together. So there's a couple of different things you can do in Lightroom. The I'll just highlight this one again. Oops. To highlight and unhighlight things, this is not really a Lightroom class, but but just what I'm doing is I'll, I'll try to explain. So if I want to add this picture, I'll hit Control and then this one, and I add it, and then Control and click it, and it's not it's gone again. So I've got three pictures here. Go back to the end key. So I can see multiple ones this way. I can turn around and, and add more of them to the to the list. So I can put as many as I want together. If I hit the Tab key, I get rid of the stuff on the side and it gives me a little bit more room. So it lets me see a bunch of them at once. So it's easier for me to compare them. If I'm really, really curious about comparing two of them side by side, so this one and this one are very, very similar, I can hit the letter C, which is a compare function. Now I'm seeing two of them side by side, but what's different about the, the compare function is I can actually take them and I can zoom right in and I can start comparing them to see, you know, which one, you know, which eye is sharper, or did she do something silly like stick her tongue between your teeth, whatever. So I can compare these fairly closely. And if they don't line up exactly, I can hit the shift key and I can move one of them around. But if I don't move, if I don't hit the shift key, when I move them, they're, they're, they move in unison. So I can actually compare, you know, two pictures fairly carefully. So these are the util tools I use to figure out which ones I'm going to keep, which ones I'm not going to keep, which are fours, which are not fours, etc. So, and I'll go back to my E is my loop view. And I can just go through these and say, okay, do I, is there something here that I really, really want to, I already turned one of these into a four. None of these really sub impressed me. I'm going to keep one. I'm going to keep this one just to show how we fix raccoon eyes. And then we'll just move ahead here. Oh, hopefully my wife will get that one. I kind of like that one. I'm going to do a four. See, that one was very similar. Actually, I like this one more. And that also one's also pretty good. So I, I just hit a couple of fours there. So having seen them all, I can get a couple of them that I think, okay, I just realized there's a couple of them that I did a, a test edit on, so that's why. Some of these fours that are coming up, let me go back to three only. I played with a few just to save time on the session. So I just went back to the threes only. That was not bad. 
And that's a four. Mm, maybe that one. That one's not bad, not bad, not bad. I like that one better. No. So if I have a bunch that are very similar and I'm not sure again, I'll go back into my other sort of uh, view. I don't mind that one. A little smile there. That one's not bad. There. And that one's the one that actually should have been a two. I can change it now. And all right, so I've got a couple of them there that I do. Whoops, so let's go back here. Maybe there's that little pose she does again. Make that one a four. That one's not bad either. All right, so there's so I'm left with uh, how many threes here? It's 82 threes out of 131 images. And then I can say how many fours that I have. And I've got like 20 fours. And then fives, I've got none. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at you know like where my, my where my images are. So let's go to the four star, and these are the ones that uh, I think are worth sharing. I got 20 of them or 20 or so. That's enough for the you know a, a portrait session with a client. So I could turn around here and I hit the G key, and I hit Control A to select all of them, and then I would do something like right click, export. And I've got a whole bunch of things that I've created here. This one puts proof on the bottom left. This puts proof on the bottom right. This actually signs it. This is when I, once I finished editing and I just want to add my signature to an image, I do, I do that one. Here's signed. So all of these go to a default folder just underneath this one. So this folder, F6, sorry, F7 is what I want. And this folder is called Katie Stevens, and I've got this thing called Other underneath. And that's where I put Elaine, you're, you've, you've got an image that you sent me that we'll edit afterwards. So I'll, uh, I'll get to that one. But right now, I've got this folder called Katie. So if I really like this one, this number four, I can just right click and I can say export as a proof bottom right. And if I click on that, up at the top left here, it's saying export one file. It's doing its thing. It'll take a second. Voila. And it came up with an image. And if you look at that image, it says proof only down at the bottom here. I'll just make it bigger. So it's the same image with the words proof only and my signature at the bottom. So I'll get rid of this and get rid of that. So we will do the same thing. I will take all my fours. Whoops, I just want just the fours. Four plus stars. Now, all of these presets I've, are things that I've created. You don't probably don't have a lot of these, but I've gone and created a few of them. So um, you can create any number of those. If somebody needs me to explain that, just raise your hand or say something. I'll give you a quick, quick tutorial. Um, so I'm going to select all of these, and I'm going to say Export. And I'm going to say export. And the export I'm going to choose is send it to a Dropbox folder with the word proof in the bottom right. So I just click OK on that. And it says, where do you want to put it? And I'm just I'm going to create a folder right now that's just junk for now. Hit Enter. And boom. And, and it starts exporting 23 files. Now. That folder that I and right click on it, get the address, and I can say, hey, all your image folder called junk, sort of uh, uh, over here it says KD27, I'll just make this bigger, 2772, this one is 2780, this one's 2784. So whichever one you like, I want that four digit number. A copy of this photo, okay, and she says, you know, like she's on her phone, oh, I like this. Well, then I have to play. You know, differences. You know, I got to find this photo and I got to find another pop, perhaps very close to it. And I'm sitting here, send me expressions. And sometimes the expressions are very similar. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, okay, wait, wait a minute. Maybe the eyebrow is a little bit brighter on this one than that one. So, anyway, so this is the, 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 uh, the folder. And all the images are in there. And I just turn around and I right click and I say, Whoops, come on. 
there it is, get Dropbox link. I get the Dropbox link, and you, know, you can paste that into wherever. Uh, it would be a good thing to use. I'll use a notepad or something like that. Uh, I just want to do an example. Control D. I'll just open up a notepad. Text document, that's fine. That's good. And I just sent a message, you know, here are the PR loops, you know, and then here's the link. All right, and that's all I do. I send that in email or I send that in a Facebook uh, chat or whatever, and then the model gets the information she wants. And then when she clicks on this link, it, she can read only all of those files. And what's what's good about read only, by the way, is the fact that she doesn't have to have a Dropbox account or anything. Anyone with that link can actually bring up those images. But you can't update them, you can't edit them, all you can do is view them. So I'll just grab that link for a moment, open my browser, open up a new folder, and if I paste it in there, this is what the client will see. All right, so I want her to give me that number that's at the top, the 2767, and then she can just thumb through these images and grab them. So that's part one of, of what I'm doing. Now, what I didn't do in this little example, because it didn't seem to be necessary, but if I'm going through these images and I hit, let's see, I'll hit this one here. And I say, whoops, Z. Okay, this one's a little bit bright. And I go, gee, I'm gonna go into develop module and I'm going to change the highlights a little bit, bring it down. I'm going to bring the some of the, I don't know if I want to bring up the uh, contrast just a bit. I still bring down the, 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 there we go. I want to take some of the texture. And I'm, not, I'm only going to do some very simple edits at this point in time, just some of the sliders. You know, make it a little bit brighter, darker, play with the vibrance, maybe play with the, the saturation. I'm not going to be sitting here removing, you know, uh, a... Um, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, removing spots in, 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 on, on the neck and, and whatever. So I'm, I'm really only working on what I would call global edits. Once you've done one global edit, however, I'll just undo that spot on the neck for a second. <clears throat> Once I've done global edits, then I can apply them to other things. So I've done this one. I go to the next one. I can just say previous, and it just copies everything from the previous thing. So it just copies everything over, the, all of the edits, the, the brightness, the, 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 the sharpness, etc. So you can copy something over fairly quickly and do many, many things. So let me start with this one, for instance. And just to, 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 to give you uh, sort of uh, an example of the power of this thing, I'm going to, I'm going to say, hey, I like this one, but I, I want it to be black and white. All right, so I'll go into the develop module and I'll just flip it to black and white. And I will bring, make the leaves really, really dark. I'm going to make your skin a little bit brighter by playing with the oranges. Her lips are a little bit dark, and voila. And I'm going to take that picture, and I'm going to hit the Shift key, and I'm going to go all the way to this one. So this one is really, really bright down at the bottom. And then all of the others are also lit, unlike this one here is not lit. But this is brighter than the others. This is the, kind of like the most selected. Now I can say Sync. And it'll sync anything I want. So it can sync just the white balance. It can sync just the tones and the highlights. It can sync the curves, the, the grading, the lens correction. I can sync the crop on all of them. But let's say I've cropped some of them and not others. I can copy everything over and just bring all my settings. But when I say synchronize, including the, I had the, um, the treatment and profile. So I should get the black and white copied over. So when I say synchronize, then essentially all of those end up looking identical. Okay, so you can make changes very quickly. So if I'm doing a wedding and we're outside and, and the, the, my settings are a little bit too high, then I can, I can adjust a bunch of them. So remember when we were doing this, the sun was going in and out, in and out, in and out. So if I wasn't adjusting and compensating, I might have some of these that are a little bit brighter than others. Another technique, and I'll just undo this. Another technique, which is kind of neat, and undo, 
There we go. I'm trying to undo the synchronize. There we go. And then I'll undo the black and white on this one. So if, if uh, some of the images were darker than others because the sun was going in and out and this one's a little bit dark and then this one's a little bit light. Okay, when I say copy my settings, the copy, the settings that it's copying is exposure of point plus 0.33 and it's going to copy that to all of the others. That's great if my exposure was right on all of them, but sometimes I'm the one who's at fault and I don't want that setting to be copied everywhere. I just want the pictures to be the same brightness. So I'll go to this guy over here and I'll select some of the others and then I'll say to Lightroom, can you please make all of these photos match the exposure of this one? So it's actually going to give one a setting of 0.3 and another one setting of 0.5 and another one setting of minus 2. And it's going to do what it needs to to equalize the 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 um, the brightness on all of these images. So it comes in pretty handy. So that's kind of some 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 shortcuts to just get to the um, just get to the point where you've got some quality proofs, all approximately the right exposure. You've just eliminated by giving things a, a grading of two, three, or four. You know, the ones that you want to share, the ones you don't want to share, the ones you want to hold back. And now you send all of that to the client via Dropbox. So the whole process can be very quickly. You know, this, these, these people who say, oh, you're going to get your wedding photos back in two months. And I'm going, what are you going to be doing for two months? Like, really? Why can't you give somebody a wedding, wedding photos like within a week? All right, so uh, once I've given somebody some photos, I can come over here and they send me back an email to say, I really like 2718, I really like this, I really like that. I went and spent some money on a little utility called Photo List Importer. And it says, you know, do you, how do you want to find your photos? So you by name, by you know, folder name that calls that, that starts something, anything that's certain certain collection. There's a whole bunch of features here. But by and large, all I'm really saying is I've got 20 years of, of, of history in here. So first of all, don't go looking through the entire um, Lightroom catalog for a photo that has the number uh, 2848 because you're going to find lots of them. So, but just stick to the 2021. So if it starts with folder name 2021, when I import them, I import them with the date that I imported them in and the, I give it a, a unique name like Katie Stevens, as I did. This is another shoot I did above there with Emily, another one with Kayla, another one with Chelsea, another one with Stephanie. So I just put a date on there and that makes it easy because sometimes somebody says, hey, you have my photos and uh, I got to go looking for them. Well, I, I know that I can limit my search to a certain date range. If I'm not sure of the date range, I can just say, find me anything in this library that has Kayla associated with it, and I'll find, you know, 55 different models with the name Kayla and across many different years. But it's usually faster if I can narrow it down. Anyways, so I'm saying look in the 2021 and find me images, and she's going to usually give me something that I can cut and paste, but for now I'm just going to type them in, 2843 and uh, let's try 2850, whoops, and let's try 27. They don't have to be in any order, 2790, and I'll pick another one there, 2878, 2878. Okay, so this is, let's say this is in, in the email that she gives me, and all right, and I'll say okay, and it goes away and it does an operation, it does blah, 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 and it says I found nine photos. All right, so I'm going to, and it puts them in a certain folder. So I go, go to that particular folder and it found these images. So these are the images. Obviously, I had some others that had the same number, but I don't care about those. I just want these. So I'm going to give these a color of green. So just as I gave things a, a number from one to four, or one to five rather, one to five is the, the grading. Number six corresponds to the color red. Number seven corresponds to yellow, eight is green, and nine is blue. So I've just given these green. So now I have these green pictures to work on, and I keep a shortcut that just says, find me anything that's green. And up comes 
anything in my entire library which is green. So this is my to-do list. I open up this in the morning. I say, okay, I got an hour or two. I'm going to work on a couple of images. So these are things that I've been wanting to do for a while. They're little personal projects. That's fine. But these four are the ones that presumably the client said, I want, um, inform I want these, um, these edited. So I can right click on these and say, go to the folder where these are incorporated. And I found these, this whole folder. I'm saying I don't want four star because the four star is everything. I just, I just want, I'll take the flags off and say, just get me the greens. So I'm just clicking on green. Oops. And now I'm in the folder itself. And these are the, my, my images to be done. So I'll open one up and I'll say, Hey, this is the one I want to work on. And we're going to start some detail editing. So any questions on global? processing, getting them out, exporting them, figuring out which ones your client wants, and looping back and, and getting yourself sort of a short list of things to be done? No, I think no, that I think makes that sense. Makes it makes, sense. makes it a little makes less little overwhelming less when you take a bunch of pictures. pictures. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and I watched some people with uh, their motor drive, and they were click, 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 click. And they got 85 pictures that are all virtually identical and... and you need a way to sort through those. I like the comparison, I like the comparison between, between the two or four photos, four too. photos too. Yeah, if you're if you're need to really you know compare two of them side by side, you know, like is their left eye a little more open on this one or a little more closed on that one? And the compare is very handy for that purpose. But uh, generally, you know, if I'm just sharing a bunch of proofs, I'll I'll go through them fairly fast. I, if I agonize over, is it? This one a four, is that one a four? If I can't tell within a half second or so, they're both fours. <laughs> or one of them's a four and the other one's arbitrarily a three. And if you give the client too many that are identical, they agonize. And that doesn't necessarily help them either. <clears throat> so and it'd be, there's a, a rule, by the way, that says if you give your client too many to choose from, they're not any more impressed than if you give them 30 really, really nice images as opposed to 70 images with a blend of mediocre and uh, great, you know, all blended together. They, they, it, it tends to, the weakest one of the, in, in the bunch tends to dilute your overall quality and, uh, and uh, prestige, if you wish. All right, so <clears throat> first thing I do is I look at the crop and I'll just bring up the R, the letter R, I use a lot of shortcuts. R is for short for, for, for crop. And Typically, you want the eyes to be somewhere around the one-third mark. So right about there would be sort of a really nice portrait crop. Now, it's cropping off too much of her, of her, uh, of her hair, but it's, it's actually probably not a bad image for as a portrait type of thing. This little hair looks a little bit uh, distracting. So this, this leaf is, is, is kind of distracting as well in the meantime. So if I'm not sure and I want to kind of preserve things. I can I can do edits a couple of different ways in, in, in Lightroom, but I can just edit itself or I can make a copy. But I'm just for now just going to do this and I'm just going to get rid of this thing over here and just do something like that. There we go. And so that that's kind of distract less distracting in the back. Overall, I'll bring her skin tone down a little bit. Now, if you remember, she was in the sort of shady area with the greens and so on. So this is a little bit cold for me. I, I'm going to bring up the, the, the temperature just a little bit. Right now it's set to white temperature as shot. I'm going to bring up the, 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 the warmth a little bit and sort of, I just brought up the, the, the temperature in the yellows a little bit and it gives it more of a, a, I don't know, sort of golden hour type look. And I tend to like that. I've had some photographers say to me, your picture's always so yellow. And I'm going, I like it, so <laughs> so it's a, it's a matter of uh, of taste. Her teeth are a little on the yellow side, so I'm going to turn around and I'm going to whiten those a little bit. Now, I can do that. I'll just I can just paint her teeth, and then turn around and say, okay, I'm going to bring the exposure up just a little bit, and then to get rid of the yellow, I'm just going to bring down the uh, the saturation. And I did that all manually, but. I could memorize this, right? I could turn around and I can say, you know, save these settings, that, that brightness and saturation as an extra setting. But I've already created some. I've already created a bunch of them and I've got one of them that I call, you know, teeth whitening. 
and it's actually a little bit lighter than the one I just did a moment ago. So the saturation was even less than the one I had a moment ago, but I can adjust it. But I've got a bunch of things that I've memorized. So I want to bring a little bit more clarity to the eyes. I'm going to start, I'm going to hit this brush, come on, and I'm going to say, let's get eye sharpen. And whoops, that was blue iris. I clicked on the wrong thing. Eye sharpen. There we go. And I can just kind of just come underneath. See, that's maybe too much. And you see how the, the, the eyelashes really, really got darker. If something is too much, there's two things you can do. You can bring this little arrow down. And then instead of taking the whole thing at level 34, I'm going to bring the whole thing down. I'm going to go down to zero and it's gone. Bring it up and it really, really a whole lot. So I'm just going to kind of just bring it down a little bit, maybe around 22. So it's 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 less than it was before. So you you can take a whole bunch of sliders and then treat them as one and bring them all the way up or all the way down together in in, in a, as a mix. The other thing you can do is you can come to this little um, tool, the, the the pin which represents this edit that I just did. I can hit the Alt key and I get a little double arrow. You see the double arrow there, and then I can do the same thing. I can increase it or decrease it. And I, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm affecting that whole group, making it lighter or darker. So just do that a little bit. And I can, you know, just as a demonstration, I'm going to come down and hit the, the, the teeth. And then, you know, you know, I can, I can play with the whole thing, right? All right. Now, if you want to see where you've painted over here, I can just click on it. And for a moment, it just highlights it. But if I hit the letter O, it tells me where I've painted. And if you hit Shift O, you can change that color. I often use green because I'm working with faces and it just shows up a little bit better. So Shift O a couple of times just changes the, the color of that shading. And then once I've hit Shift O a couple of times, I can hit O and turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. So if I'm seeing that some of the green's gone a little too far, I'll hit the Alt key, hit the right square bracket, to make it smaller and then I can just take it off the the eyelid here and you know I, I just got sloppy and painted a couple too many places and just take it off in a couple of places you know, it, it usually it doesn't even show but it just gives me an idea so what else we're going to do let's whiten the eyes a little bit so again I'm going to start a new a new thing and I'll just uh, I, actually I often use the the teeth whiten along with with eyes they're very similar in terms of so I'm just going to just paint in here and paint in there. So the eyes just a little bit brighter. And um, I mean, I don't know that I want to do a whole lot more to this. There's a stray hair here, which is, is, is a bit of a pain. So I'm going to hit this, this heel tool <clears throat> and there's a clone and there's a heel. I hardly ever use clone. Clone literally copies pixels. And you literally can I can literally turn around and say, you know, come on. And I've just copied that hair here or vice versa. I can move these things around and, you know, I can turn her into a cyclops or whatever. So I'm literally copying those pixels up here. That's the clone. Whereas the heel, I'm just going to hit the heel. It tries to take this texture and put it over there and, and marry the color. So it, it kind it does a little bit more more mathematics. So what you typically want is the heel. So I'll take this and I'm just going to make this smaller and you just want a little bit bigger. And I don't want it as fine as the hair, but just, you know, approximately. And Lightroom, whoops, undo. Control Z to undo. Come on. Hello. There we go. So you typically want just to do a few at a time. I wouldn't do an entire hair because you need to find a place to copy it from, from here to here. If you have this whole hair, you need an area that's, that's big enough to outline all of it. Now you can't start here because all of a sudden you're, you're, you're interfering with this guy. You can start a little further and then double back, make sure there's a good overlap. And that's not too bad. And if you don't like where it, it picked from, you can move it somewhere else. Okay, and 
to me, I don't, I don't see that hair anymore, and I don't see an awkward pattern in the freckles. So the, 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 the whole thing seems to fit very nicely. And this one's going to be a little trickier, but I'm still going to try. And get a little copy somewhere. Good. Okay, so I have, by the way, visual, this, this auto turned on. You can say, always show me my, my tools, like all the pin marks and, and everything I'm doing. Do it automatically. Do it only if I select it and never show them to me. I like auto because as soon as I move my cursor onto the picture, this shows up. And if I have two of them, then I can see two of them. Okay, I see that pin and that pin. But as soon as I move my cursor off the picture, they disappear. Same thing when I was using this tool here. My pin marks there, there, and on the on the lips show up. I can see my pin marks, but if I move my my, my cursor off, it's off. So that's my, my I kind of look, put them on, take them off, put them on, take them off, just to, to see uh, what it looks like. I'm going to hit the Z key to, to back off, and I've got something that looks you know reasonably good. Uh, I'm not sure what else I would do. You guys see anything else you want to see done? Maybe this earring looks a little kind of distracting. And now am I going to copy the face or am I going to copy the hair? I think there's a little bit of hair on both sides of the earring, so I may just let that go over into the hair side. And I want to, I want to pick something that kind of makes sense. That's not too bad. It, it's, it's interesting that it's picked up some of the gold from the earring. So I might want to just subdue that a little bit. I'm just going to put a little, little circle on top of this thing. And I'm just going to rotate it. And right now it's like exposure is up a little bit and saturation is down. So this left over from the teeth whitening thing. So I'll just double click. And then I'll just remove some of the saturation and maybe even darken it a little bit. And then let's step back and, and see what that looks like. And yeah, it's not great. Now this is where you start to run into that. Uh, maybe we're better off in Photoshop because you can do more sophisticated cloning and healing in, in Photoshop. But if I was just sending out a, a proof, then this is probably not bad. If it's a TF shoot and not being paid for it, there's only so much time I'm willing to put into it. So the other thing that's useful to note is, do we have one where she's got a little bit of circles under her eyes? She's actually pretty good. I don't know if I've got a good example. Yeah, not really, but and I'll use this one as an example. Some people have the dark circles under their eyes, and, and so I just take this area and I just kind of do this. And then it, it, whoops, and then I'll copy it from the cheek. So I, I try to remove the, the circles underneath the eyes, but sometimes it looks artificial. And so you're, you're, what you're doing is you're using the cheek to heal the under eye. And what I do is, rather than leaving the opacity at 100%, I could bring it down to like 70%. So if I go to zero, that's what her under eye looks like at 100%. It's fully healed, and if I bring it to about 70%, you would get a little bit of that under circle under the eye. Same thing if she has a mole or something that's on the skin. That's her. And if you take it away, she may go like, what happened to my mole? Why is it gone? But I can always kind of leave it at 50% and it's still there. 100% it's all gone. Zero, it's fully back. So I can maybe make that, you know, like... 22% or so, and it's, it's still there. So if somebody knows her, it's there, but it's not as distracting. So you can, you know, you can still leave things looking natural. You don't have to take away all the pimples and all of this and all of that. She doesn't have to be a porcelain doll, but you can, um, you can, you can make things more subtle and not do, do the, 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 uh, the edit to 100% all the time. Okay, another thing you can do is this tool here is a graduated filter. And if this is too bright over here, I can turn around and, and draw a line. And so this is the halfway mark from here down. It's 100%. That's about 50%. And by the time it gets here, it's zero. So I'll just 
if I, if I were to make it all black, you can see what happens. So I don't want to make it all black, but I want to darken it a little bit. So the, the emphasis is on her face. Maybe even make it a little bit less sharp so I can reduce the clarity and, and you know, the texture. And so it puts more emphasis on her face is all I'm trying to do. Probably too bright on her face right now, but let's, 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 let's play with that, those concepts. If everything about the picture is fine and I just want the face to be a little darker, I can actually put a little circle draw that over there double click to just get rid of it and I can just reduce the highlights oh that's too much right about there somewhere make just the face a little bit yellower so the rest of the picture doesn't change I can maybe bring the clarity up a little bit if the skin has defects or whatever I can kind of bring down the, the, the texture the hand is a little bit uh, too bright so I'll just draw another little quick circle over here and just bring the exposure down. That's actually too much. I'll bring it over here. And I think nothing of drawing a bunch of these little circles here and there. Just a, you know, this is a little bit too bright over here. Reduce that, you know, a little bit. Uh, you know, I want a little highlight. I want, you know, some of these brushes to be a little bit more highlight, give that a little bit more clarity. So I can, I can put a lot of these little circles all over the place. And I'm just doing very quick edits without having to go into, um, Photoshop and do a lot of dodging and burning. If uh, this side of her face is a little bit, you know, nice and bright, but this side I want a little bit darker, I'll just, you know, turn around and just draw a rough circle here, do that, and put a little more contrast on this side of her face. And so I'm thinning out her face if she's a little too, uh, you know, too wide a face. That's not the case. In this particular case, this side of her face is really the bright one. I'll probably bring this over here reduce some of the highlights and I'm just putting a little bit like I'm just actually changing her, her a little bit of the shadows on the cheeks but I'm, I'm doing this very quickly with just circles here and there so I have what one circle there two three four five circles that are all set up right now and each of them is doing a different thing that one's doing something to the hand that's doing something to the cheek this was doing all the overall brightness of the face and if you're not sure what this one's doing I just highlighted this one. You can see where it is. It's a little bit of yellow. It's highlights are down minus 16, textures down minus 19, clarity's up 19, and everything else is still zeroed out. So this is really just an arbitrary set of adjustments for this area. And this area starts at the pin at the brightest. And then by the time it gets all the way to the edge, it's almost zero. And it's very even from the center out because I've got feathers set to 100%. Just to give you an example, I'll just, I'm darkening it. You can see the edges are not too dark, but the center is darkest. But if I turn around and I change the feather, that effect is even from edge to edge, as opposed to being lighter on the edges and heavier in the center. So the feathering is, is usually set to 100% for almost everything that I do unless I want to do something very specific, but most of the time I'm, I'm doing things with, with, uh, with feathering. So I introduced <coughs> the circle. We talked a lot about these, these areas where you could paint. So if you have somebody with, uh, that's a good example here. All right, I don't undo. I'm not sure, oh, I've already got some stuff here that I've already done. So I, I actually painted the iris and gave it a little bit more color. I painted the whites and I did the teeth. So there's already a couple of adjustments on this particular one. If you ever want to get back to any of the pictures and you want to see what you did before and after, there is a reset function, but that literally resets everything. So, I mean, you could, you could use that. And if I look at my history, I updated the feather, I did the radial, I did this, I did this, I did this. If I hit reset, it's actually an extra setting and now it's back to the way it was. So reset settings is my last history setting. I could then say undo and it brings it back again. So that's one way of doing it. But the other way of doing it is sitting the next to your square bracket. There's a backslash key and that just says before, after, and just that doesn't change anything. It just changed the view. So it's just a before and after view that lets you 
you sort of how far you've come and you kind of go, oh, did I overdo it? I mean, is it really too yellow or is it okay or did I make it too dark? So it lets you, it lets you go back and forth very quickly to, to, to see what you're doing. And you're, if you <coughs> like the edit that you've done and you're saying, okay, this is not bad, I, I kind of like this, you can go over here and say snapshot and I'll just call it done. And there is one version of the picture that's done. Now, I'm wondering if this would look good if I were to crop it differently. And, you know, I just do this maybe and include that. No, I don't want to include that, that flower. See, if I do this, I have this <coughs> funny little stick sticking over there. I think I'll bring it all the way in and bring this up here. So now I've got a leading line that goes from the arm up the... <coughs> up the leading line that goes up the arm to the shoulder and leads me to her face. The hair kind of brings me down. The hand brings me back up. I've got a little circular flow going on there. So I don't mind that. <clears throat> so let's take another snapshot. And I'll call this one cropped. So I now have two versions of the same image. One cropped, one not cropped. Now well, let's see what it would look like if it was a black and white. So I'll maybe flip it to a black and white look. And I'll just look at these these different that one maybe. Yeah, I like the high contrast one better. Yeah. Okay. So let's go over here. So we'll, we'll use that one. And then it, while it is high contrast, I think that the face is a little bit too bright. I'm just going to lower that a little bit. Not too bad. And then if I wanted to adjust. The yellows and the stuff that was in the background, I can make the leaves brighter or less bright. Yeah, right about there somewhere. There's no aquas in this picture, so that's not going to map anything. The orange would map to her skin, so I, I can really play with, with the uh, the orange. It's very, very sensitive. You've got to be careful. <clears throat> By the way, when you're playing with these sliders, if you're having a hard time sliding back and forth and it's like, oh, that's too far, let's do this, and you're, you're, every time you move it, you're having trouble, you can certainly make it wider. Whoops. And then give yourself, you know, a little bit more playroom on the side. The other thing you can do is you can hit the shift key. And when you have the shift key and you're moving things sideways, you're moving things very, very slightly. So it's, it's almost kind of moving it in slow motion. So you have to move your mouse a whole lot further to achieve the, the same effect. Whereas if you take it off, it, it, I'm moving it now and it's going, you know, a whole bunch. But if I push my shift key, I'm moving my mouse the same amount I was earlier, but the, the effect is, is a lot less pronounced. So your, your shift key comes uh, uh, comes in handy as a way of moving things. And if you don't want to use the sliders, you can click on the number and just hit the tap the up arrow and down arrow and just go down by a number. So you're going a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can play with, with these a couple of different ways. Anyway, so there's my black and white version. I'm going to take another snapshot, shortcut to control N, and then just say BW. So now I have the same picture. It doesn't take any space on my hard drive, any more space on the hard drive. I still only have one raw file on my hard drive, but I have this edit, this edit, and this edit. So I've got all of those and I can, you know, show any one of them and it really comes in handy. Let's say I want to do a crop version of this that's an 8x10 for my client. <clears throat> I can say crop 8x10 and say, okay, there's my 8x10. Save that. Control N. 8x10. And now they need a 5x7 of the same thing. Uh, here's a 5x7. And it's a slightly different crop, so I have to kind of move things around a little bit. And maybe over here. And Control N. And there's a 5x7. <clears throat> so I can have a number of different versions of the same image. Now the downside of snapshots is you have to click on it and then do an export. Click on it and do an export. Click on it and do an export. Because every time you do an export, you're getting whatever it is it currently is. <clears throat> if you needed to export all of them at the same time, then you would have to make copies of them. And so you can right click on an image and say make a virtual copy. And this virtual copy, I want this one to be my black and white. 
So now I have this one, which is currently set to 8 by 10, and I have this one, which is currently set to black and white. Now when I, I can right-click on both of these, and I can say export to, you know, uh, signed bottom right. <clears throat> and those two images will go out. Chug, 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 chug. And I've got a folder here with those two images. That one, that one, and that was another one I did. Oh, that was the proof I did earlier. Okay, so. All right. Um, a couple more quick things in Lightroom, and then we'll move to our Photoshop. <clears throat> Mike, I got a question. Right, I got a question. Yep. Oh, okay, so yep. because I'm more of a natural, like, does that shine that's on the right cheek, cheek, is that something that's, that's something that's normally there for normal photography, photography, and is it also, also accentuated, accentuated because of, because of like, per, like, perspiration during that day? During that day? Uh, yeah, oil is usually what causes the, uh, an oily skin is usually what causes the, um, the perspiration, but if you, you a shine is normal, you, you, if it's too much, it's distracting. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But if I wanted to, I could, here's a, a good example of, of, let's see if we could get rid of some of that. So I could take that, I could try a couple of different things. One is I could just put a little circle over it and just remove some of the highlights. And that's not too bad. It's taking some of it off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And another little trick is this circle is, is round and it starts at the beginning very high and then fades out at the end. But I can actually hit the brush. Now the brush here is different from the brush there. This is the brush extension mm -hmm. of this mm -hmm. circle. So the circle is still the, the radial tool is still what I'm using. But in addition to this, I'm going to do a little bit of painting over here. Now if I hit the O key, you can see where, I, where I've painted? Yeah. yeah. And there. Now if, if I've painted too much here, I can obviously undo it. I can reduce the flow and then I can paint a little bit more and, and it's, 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 it's not going to be as strong or as pronounced. Mm -hmm. So, and if you are used to the brush in Photoshop, you might think that every time you paint, you're adding all the time. Lightroom is really weird. <laughs> if I change my density and I say, I want to paint with a density of 10%, I'm going to come way down here. When I'm painting, I'm actually reducing this to 10%. Okay. You know, if I, I'll just cross across here, just as an example. You see, I just crossed across there. And in fact, just to make my, my example really, really dramatic, I, I'm, I just darken that whole thing. Wherever I painted with 10%, it became 10% instead of whatever was there before. If I just change this to, let's say, 50%, I'll just do an X this way. So where it was 10% is now 50 and where it was wherever 100% it's now less and this is 50 so this is really from here to here is actually 50 it's deceiving it's an optical illusion because it's going across different shades mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. everything I'm drawing now is all at, at 50% and I'm laying it down with a flow of 75 if I build up build up build up build up build up eventually it's going to build up to 52 but if I reduce it and I go over the same area, then I'm actually kind of erasing. I'm reducing the density to 15%. Okay. Anyways, okay. all of that just to say there's a lot of ways of fixing it, but I'm not finding it highly objectable, but if, you, if you're if you not happy with it, you can certainly just, I just do a quick little circle here and you know, maybe take out, take out, actually, I like this better. I'm playing with the, I'm playing with the whites and it's just, it's taking some of the edge off the high end. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, I'm still painting with a low, low, low density, so I'll just bump that up a little bit. There we go. And I've got this little dark patch on the cheek that, that is maybe a little distracting. Can I assume that your eye brightening uh, macro action is just uh, essentially bumping up the whites? Yeah, so the, the eye one, oops, is really nothing more than I use this one. It's a little bit of saturation is reduced mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the exposure is up a little bit. Okay. 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 So it's just nothing more than a, than a, uh, than, than a combination. So I'm taking some of the yellow out of the eye by reducing the saturation and I'm just bumping up the, uh, the whites. So I just bump this a little paint there, a little paint there. Now, if you're afraid of going too far, there is an auto mask capability. If you turn that on and you start to paint inside the white, if you go a little too far and you hit some of the brown or some of the black, the, the brush will try to stay in the area you're painting. It won't try to, to, to ex exceed that. So you can see without a lot of effort, it stayed pretty close. Now, if I go really, really close, and let's go, you can see, uh, yeah, yeah, I kind of went into the brown a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I can hit the, the minus, I can hit the Alt key and just erase it. Okay, while I'm here, catch lights, there's a nice little catch light there. Mm -hmm. I can hit this and I can give myself a new brush and just bump up the exposure a little bit. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger and I can just do a quick tap, boom. And then I'm gonna go over to the other eye and just give it a little quick tap. And I did that tap at density of 79 because I've been playing with density and flow. I usually don't do that, but anyways, I'll just give it another tap here, another tap there. And you can see where the green is. I'll get rid of the letter O. And so if I double click on effect, it goes away. Control Z and it brings it back. So this little exposure tap that I have is just a quick way. And so I can also hit the, the, the minus, the, 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 the backslash key to go before and after, but everything is showing, not just the dot. It's, it's the color of the skin. It's the, the sharpening of the eyes, the whitening. So I'm getting the entire picture before and the entire picture after. If I just want to see the effect of the catch light thing that I played with, I literally have to take it away because I, I've, I've selected this dot. Okay, so right now it's just the, the green dot that, that I've got on top of the picture. So I will, this is currently sitting at 0.6, double click, and it's gone. And then control Z to bring it back. And it just gives me that idea. And then if you want to reduce it or increase the, um, the catch light, the eye is interesting. When the light goes into the eye, it bounces off the retina and then comes back on the opposite side of the eye. So a lot of the high level retouchers will tell you, bring your flow or your density you know, down and put another little and go a little bit wider and go a little dab, a little dab on the opposite side of the eye. Huh. Huh. Okay, and all you've done now is, you see that? Yeah, yeah. So just underneath the eye here, opposite to that catch light, and you've got just a little bit of brightness at the opposite end of the iris. Okay. okay. Then, then another one that I use for the eyes, this picture probably doesn't need it, but uh, another one that I use for the eyes is, I'll start with a new one, and I have iris enhance, wherever that is, here it is. Iris enhance just bumps up the clarity, so a little bit more texture, and also bumps up the saturation. So now I will reduce my mouse, uh, my, my cursor size, and it just kind of gives the eye that extra little oomph of color. Okay, so if you're really looking to really bump up the eyes, then that's, you know, by the time it gets over here, it's probably not very noticeable. But this is our before and after. Mm -hmm. And you can see 
the eye color. You can see the sharpness that we put around the edges of the eye. You can see that little so-called circle under the eyes is, is, is changing as well. Okay. Now, the other trick I wanted to get to you uh, uh, across is this built-in masking. Whether you draw a circle, whether you paint, or whether you draw this uh, with this um, graduated tool, there's always a way to mask it. So I will use any one of them. We haven't used this one a whole lot, so I'll use this one. And I'll draw, a, a, if I just do this, it's just half the picture, right? And just to make life easy, I'll just darken it. So now I've just half the picture. What if I do it right off the entire picture? So what I've done is I've, I've darkened the entire picture. I mean, whether I, I darken it, or I change the color, or I you know make the whole thing you know more hazy, I can do whatever I want. This is just a whoops, undo. This is just a from here to here is one hundred percent. Everything after that it falls off, and then I decide what I'm going to do with it. So what I want to do with it in this case is let's say I want to flat soften the skin a little bit. I'm going to reduce the texture. I'm going to reduce the clarity, and this picture has an overall softness now, but the whole picture is softer. The leaves are softer, the skin is softer, etc. I want to apply it to just one area. So if I hit the letter O, you can see the whole picture is being affected. You know from what I said earlier that I can hit the brush, and I can start erasing, right? I can hit the Alt key, and I can say, oh, I don't want this effect to appear here. And, and so this effect's appearing everywhere except where I brushed it away. So it's, it's a way of taking things away. I'll just undo that for a moment. But another way of doing it is say, I only want it to go to the face. So I'm going to use this range mask over here. I'm going to say, here's a color. I'm going to pick up the color picker. And I'm going to say, that's the color that I want. Notice that all the green went away just about everywhere except the face. And somehow it picked up from the face. Oh, it's, it's also doing her, her hand. But it seems to be a little bit on these leaves. Why? Because some of the green has reflected into her into her, her skin tone and so it's picking up all of these skin tones but I want it to be more exact so I can take this amount and say that color that I picked I want it to be plus or minus you know so many pixels or certain deviation if I go wider I'm gonna get more and more area but if I go narrower I can actually get it to just about just her face so now what's happening is whatever cho I choose to apply in this case, it was texture and clarity. I'll just let it remove the O key. It's just affecting her her um, her face. Oh, and I just noticed that the saturation is up. That's why her face is so so red. I'll just remove the saturation. There we go. So, and then I could maybe make her just her face a little yellower. All right. So now I have negative texture, negative clarity, and the, what else did I just do? Something... Uh, oh, and I made the temperature just a little higher. I'm just looking for all the non-zero things. And that's only affecting your face. I hit the letter O, and you can see it's only affecting your face. Actually, it's affecting the stems here, if you see very quickly. So there's a little bit on the stems. If I was bothered by it, I could go ahead and erase it on just the stems. Whoops, get rid of this little color selector. Hit the Alt key and I can just erase it from here if I wanted to. But it's if, whoops, I didn't want to erase it from the from that hand. And voila. So it's just a way of, of applying a change in one selective area. So here's our before and our after. Make sense? All right, let's get over here. Mike, we have uh, Denise email you know, because he just wrote a comment on the uh, Meetup site saying that he didn't get the Zoom mic. Like. Oh, all right. Thanks for telling me. Uh, do I have Denise what email? Yeah, yeah. I do. Let me see. I'm going to switch to Facebook Messenger. Oh. Instagram. Where's my Messenger? D-N-I-E, the Negro. All right, and I need a 
I need a do, 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 invite copy link and we go back to Demi Guru There we go. And hopefully he'll get that. Uh, if you have access to that, can you reply to him? Say, check your Facebook Messenger. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, oh, so I knew where I was going is I'm going to go to the folder where this picture was. This is the sign folder, the, the stuff that I just exported. And then under others, I have this one. Elaine. Yes. It looks good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I realized when I got home, uh, yeah. and perhaps my husband may have pointed it out, I was so worried about trying to get, there's way too much room on top. So I should have balanced that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it, the, the important thing is, is the picture is very usable. I mean, the, the, the eyes are pin sharp. So that's really good. Uh, and yeah, in terms of composition, that's probably where I would start. So let's go to the develop module. And so in terms of composition, you you typically want the eyes to be kind of that, at that one third line. And the rule of thirds says the face should be kind of in one of these intersection points, one, two, three, or four, one of those points. So that's probably a better composition. Again, remember that this is an, an arbitrary crop. If the client needs something specific, you know, for an eight by 10 or whatever, you can actually choose to say, hey, I, I'm going to make this an 8x10. And now you have an 8x10 crop, and now you can kind of just format it based on that requirement. But if you're just doing it by eye, if it's just for social media, then any old crop will work. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of challenges when you work with social media because Instagram wants one format and Facebook wants another, and, and all of these things have their own preferences. But anyway, so this is approximately a good crop. And I'm actually using these leaves that you have here almost as leading lines. You've got some, some leaves coming in here and some leaves coming in there. And so that you got a few things that are kind of pointing to her face. You've got a bit of a repeating pattern between the, 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 the sumac and the, the, what she's wearing. So that's, that's kind of nice. Now it says you shot this at 2.8 and you know, her face is still really, really sharp. The sumac and the leaves are still reasonably sharp. So you, uh, the background is nicely blurred, the, the, the leaves in the background, but you still got a lot of sharpness kind of in the same plane as her. Uh, you've got the coolness. This was shot at, this is as it was shot. If I change it to cloudy setting, it's a little bit, little bit warmer, maybe too warm. You know, so I just typically eyeball it and I just kind of just, I add a little bit of, of what I want to it. So that's probably kind of a, a warmness that I like, but again, it depends on what you're trying to do for your, 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 your client or so. The hand's a little bit bright and taking away from her face. So I'll just draw a little circle down here and just kind of take away some of the highlights on that hand. There we go. That's not too bad. And so, a picture looks good if it's got nice dynamic range, black, black, and, and white, white. So I'll hit the Alt key and I'll just look at blacks and I'll see, should I darken anything? And when I hit the, the, the what's happening here? Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm affecting the circle and I didn't want to do that. I want to affect the entire picture. So I've already got some blacks. You see where the color is? Those are already pretty black. So I don't need to make the blacks in much blacker. Now everything's too black. If I let go, you see it, it's way too black. I'm just gonna, I'm hitting the Alt key and I'm playing with the black slider. And I'm just gonna get a touch of color. So there's a few places that are really black. And then if I go into highlights, the same thing, I can keep doing this until those things now became overly white. So on her sweater became too, too white. So I'm just gonna back off a little bit and just do that. So now I have some pretty dark darks and some pretty white whites. So 
So I've got a, a good in between. But I think her face now has taken on too much of a uh, a shine. So I'm just going to kind of just do this and, boop, boop, and take off some of the highlights, reduce some of the exposure there. That's kind of an overall balance. Maybe keep the face a little bit warmer than the rest of the photo. And just bringing up the temperature a smidgen. So that's not too, too bad. Um, is there anything in detail that has to be done? Some it depends on how much time and effort you want to put into your photo. I'm just going to go to 100% here, make our life a little easier. Uh, let's just do brush in the teeth. And I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. So I've got the teeth a little bit. I'll use the same brush and I'm going to hold down the control key to, to automatically get my auto mask turned on. There we go. And then I'll start with another new brush and I'll just take away all the effects and I'm just going to do a, a little... Whoops! <clears throat> I hit the square bracket and it just increased the rating so it just made this from a 0 to a 2 because I hadn't applied it yet. There we go. Now I hit when the square bracket, the, 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 the cursor is getting bigger. So, <clears throat> so some idiosyncrasies of, uh, of Lightroom. So this is, I got a little dab there. I'm going to put a little dab over here. And now I can decide, you know, how much catch light I put in there, but I'll put it just a little bit. And then I'm going to reduce the, the dense. Actually, the density is already low. So I'm going to change the flow a little bit. I'll just put a little dab down at the bottom here. Just, I'm just brightening up the iris just a smidgen. And start another new brush. And I, well, I double click on effect and it zeroes everything out. Right? I could go and pick something, but sometimes I sometimes I want something specific. I sharpen. <clears throat> Density up, flow up, and I'll just kind of just I'm just kind of giving her a little bit more of a impact on the on the uh the eyebrows and the, the eyelashes are just have a little bit more more pizzazz. So that's before and after so far. And <clears throat> the overall tonality is still quite um, quite similar. If I draw a big circle around her face and my subject, <clears throat> and I instead of doing what's on the inside, if I do this, this is just the inside of the circle. I remove that in, invert, and now I, what I'm doing is I'm affecting the outside. And I'm just kind of wondering if I just give this thing a little bit more of a, kind of darken the jungle a little bit around here, and maybe bring up the overall image, contrast, and warm up that whole thing a little bit more. I don't know. Are we heading in the right direction, or is that not not your taste? What uh, that might be a little too much for me. Uh, that's a little that's too warm, but I like it better yeah. than the uh, yeah. as shot because I found her a little. Okay. Yeah. So so I haven't played with vibrance or saturation. So the difference between vibrance and saturation is saturation is almost like an equation. It it. it if something's saturated at level two and you double it, it becomes four. If it's already at a five at a twenty, it'll become a forty. Whereas vibrance is more of a a percentage increase. So if something's highly saturated, it gets less treatment. And if something's low saturated, it gets more treatment. So vibrance is a smarter form of saturation. So I often remove saturation altogether and I bump up the vibrance. And so anything that used to be vibrant remains vibrant and anything that wasn't vibrant gets a little bit more. So this is kind of where we were. And I can go back and check. See, this is where we were a moment ago. And this is where we are now. So it's just a little bit of a difference. But again, this is very much to taste, right? It depends on what you want to do. 
And again, I've, I've, I've played with the temperature a little bit. I can always bring it back. I can certainly, you know, I mean, that's way too much. I, I can make this very cool. I can make it, you know, way too, way too, um, too warm. And I can just put it back to where it was. And we're there. Now, because I have a circle on the face, That's the inner one or the outer one? That's the outer one. I can I can affect the warmth of the overall picture without affecting her face, or I can just focus on her face and, and just, you know, now I'm just playing with the face, but the overall picture doesn't change. If you go too far, obviously, it looks artificial, but nobody's going to notice if you just want to warm up the face just a hint or bring the face a little bit brighter. I often find I want to brighten the face a little bit just to bring attention to the face. And then she doesn't need it, but just for the sake of our discussion, I'll double click. I will apply a skin softening. Where is it? Soften skin. So that's the overall thing, but I'm just going to say, no, don't do the whole thing. Just soften the skin area. So this is the only thing that's being affected. There's a little patch in the back there that's being affected, but the soft leaves in the back won't notice. So I actually have a little bit more of a, a, a softening of the skin. Now, that's way too much. This clarity is way down. I don't know if my skin softening formula is, is out of touch, but there we go. I think that's a little bit better. So remove it and add it back. There we go. Oh, Denis joined us. Good. So, Denis, I've recorded this so you can you can pick it up and the others can review. <clears throat> um, so there's a, f I'll just hit F, bring it up to full screen. So uh, I don't know, I think her skin's a little too overdone here, right? I, I'm not seeing any of the freckles, I'm, I'm losing some of the, the things. So this the skin softening thing isn't working for me, but it's, it's more of the technique and, and how to use it. Now, if you wanted to get really, really precise, it would be tricky to do but, oops, hang on a second. I gotta go back here. I'm going to select this thing, which is a skin softening, and I'm gonna to try to select a color, but if I was really, really careful, I would want to select a color which is not a freckle, and then try to get very, very narrow with my my focus so that literally this skin tone gets selected, but the freckles don't. So the freckles stay and the, some of the texture stay. Clearly, you can see that the eye isn't being selected. Some of the eyelashes are not being selected. And if I look around, I'm going to hit the space bar and see if I can. So you can see the hair here is not being selected. So this portion of the skin is darker and it's not being selected. And are we selecting? See, this, the freckles still seem to be selected. Now, if you really wanted to get fancy, and I, I, I certainly don't have the patience for this, but whoops, go back. I want to select this guy. I'm going to go down, right down, and I'm going to take the brush, and I can literally say, remove the skin sharpening. I'm hitting the Alt key here. Remove the skin sharpening, you know, here, 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 and literally I could just start, you know, bringing some of the freckles back. Nobody has time Nobody for that. Has time for that. <laughs> no, and, and, and this is Lightroom. In, in Photoshop, there's, there's, there's techniques for, for, for doing, selecting, you know, colors and tones that are much more, um, much more uh, precise. And then I'll just hit the letter U, and then you can see some of these freckles and whatnot are back. And I still think it's a little bit too much. I'm going to reduce some of the highlights on. There we go. Increase some of the contrast. Maybe warm that up a little bit. So I'm still playing with, with, with that overall effect. And I'm still playing with just this uh, graduated filter, I can <clears throat> I can close this whole thing, 
And now I, since I can make the face softer, I can actually afford to, to put more texture and, and more detail in other parts of the image while what's happening on the face is being diminished. So I, I'm actually able to control what's happening to the face separate from the rest of the picture. And I can get, you know, sort of a, a, an overall more pleasing effect. I think this looks much more natural on her, but it brings more attention to the overall outside. I already have a circle that goes on the outside where we, oh, that was the face, or is this the outside? Hang on, that's that's the inside, and that's, I'm looking to see here what's the inverted, and if I'm not sure, I can always just play with the a slider. So I'm gonna go back here, and if all of these leaves are taking too much attention away, I can actually reduce the clarity on the outside, reduce the texture on the outside, reduce the sharpness on the outside, and now all of a sudden her face is much more pronounced and everything else has gone softer. So I've added some depth of field, you know, kind of artificially to the to the image. Oh, I all right. like it. Oh, I like it. What? I like it. I like it. You like it? Okay, well, I mean here's our before and after. You can see the catch lights are really popping. The picture's a little bit warmer. It's got a little bit more, more, more emphasis. And we haven't used everything we did is, is natural, right? We haven't used any presets. There's a gazillion presets out there that you can get, you know, and, and give these things all kinds of different looks. You know, just different filters. Some of them are ghastly. Others are kind of okay. You know, that's almost like a fall look. And so you can you can apply any one of these things over and above anything else you've done. So there's there's a lot of things that we could do. So let's take this sucker into Photoshop. Right click, edit, and do that. So I usually go as far as I can in in Lightroom, and uh, then decide if I have to go to Photoshop. If I know I'm going to have to do a lot, then I can actually, um, so I can actually go to Photoshop right away and, and not fidget with it in, in Lightroom. The advantage of doing it in Lightroom though is remember how I copied over the exposure? If I have a bunch of pictures and she's pretty much in the same place, the circle on her skin and the circle around and, you know, not the coloring of the eye that would be you know very hard because the her eye in the next picture is going to be different but all of the gross things that we did with the circle there the circle on the hand the overall sort of vignetting that we did the uh, graduated filter on the side which is it was targeting your skin tone all of those things can be copied from one picture to the next so you could have a whole bunch of pictures with slightly different expressions where she's smiling where she's looking down where she's looking up and apply this change to all of them so it would be very, very uh, handy to do that. I don't have a whole bunch of your photos <laughs> like that, but uh, I could actually copy this, these settings to one of my photos, for instance, where she's more or less in the same position on the screen. So here we are in Photoshop. <clears throat> I'm gonna make a copy of this thing. And obviously there's a whole lot left to be done in Photoshop, but I mean, there's, there's, there's a few things that you could do. So uh, Phil, you use uh, things like, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Portrait Pro? Uh, yeah, Portrait yeah. Pro and yeah. Topaz. Topaz. And Topaz. Okay, so I've got a number of those things as well. So, I mean, I have on one effects on one developer, the Luminar 4, Luminar II, the Topaz, and I also have the Portrait Pro. So, you know, I got a bunch of these different tools. And it's like having many different hammers in your workshop. I mean, one's a tack hammer, one's a sledgehammer, one's a, <laughs> you know, a. You know, a, a, uh, a roofing hammer, so they all slightly do different things. I'm sure any one of them would knock in a nail, but <laughs> you, you have the benefits. So Portrait Pro lets you decide whether it's a, a female, a male, or a child. If, if I say female, it applies certain defaults. And it automatically goes ahead and it finds, I'll, I'll bring up this other view, it found the eyelashes more or less. It wasn't quite right. I can actually rearrange it so that it's more correct. Uh, it found the eyes, it found the lips, it found the nose, it found the face, and it's applying its own little um, defaults. 
So this is the picture that it came up with after, as a default, and I'll just show you a before and after. So it's it's actually you know softened the skin quite a bit. It's bumped up the eyes. It's removed some of the circles underneath the eyes. It's actually changed her lip, given her a little bit of a smile, and uh, a lot of the freckles are gone, so on and so forth. But you can go ahead and you can start changing some of this stuff, right? I can say, oh. Around the eyes, it's fine, but the imperfections on the skin, I don't want those gone away. I'll take those away and, and some of the freckles that now come back. Uh, you're asking about um, shine and stuff like that. So there are things like remove shine is turned on. I can bring it on up or bring it down. And it, it I think it's affecting this area right here where I can say sort of remove shine, bring up shine. So it's, it's playing with that. Remove the pores, add the pores back remove fine shadows, remove wrinkles. So there's a lot of different um, capabilities. You can sharpen the skin a little bit more, give it a little bit more texture. So that's actually adding more of the freckles in. I can just see the freckles literally, literally coming in here. That might be too much on the eyes, but we can always remove some of it. Right? I can go in here and say restore, and I can just remove some of the excess that I just did on, in various areas, but then leave it on, on, the, on the skin. And so remove some of that sharpen. So I'm actually leaving some of that extra sharpening on the skin. Uh, and I'm not suggesting this is this is what I which you which you should be doing. And I'm exaggerating the effects so that you can actually see it easily on your monitor. You can play with with uh, the texture of the skin as well, and, and and give it give it some 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 extra pizzazz. But there's a whole bunch of things that you can do here very, very easily. And these are examples of plugins. There's many of them. Uh, if I felt her face was a little bit uh, too too wide or whatever, I can turn around and change her face shape and, and just, you know, so you can just, you know, a little bit heavier, a little bit skinnier, uh, you know, check the eyes a little closer, a little further apart. You can make the eyes a little bit wider. If she's, you know, looking into the sun and her eyes are a little bit closed, you can just make her eyes a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. You can play with a lot of stuff. You know, give her, you know, a little bit more plump lips. And I don't want both of them. I just want the top lip to be a little bit more plump. So there's a whole bunch of whack of things that you can do in terms of body sculpture. There's one, this is Portrait Pro. There's another one called Figure Pro or something like that. I don't remember if you know Phil. But I can, you know, make her a little skinnier, a little heavier, you know, reduce the, 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 uh, the, um, the biceps or, or the thighs, you know, you can target things individually. I can turn around and play with her lipstick a whole bunch and, and give her, you know, different shades of lipstick. Uh, do, oops. You know, remove and, and play with the shine. Uh, I can turn around and give her some Again, whiten the eyes, clean the eyes, all of this type of stuff that we were doing in, in, in light room, we can do very easily here. Sharpen the eyes a whole bunch more. See the catch lights really come out now when you sharpen the eyes. Brighten the iris to make them look radioactive. <laughs> Try not to do that, but you can just brighten them a little bit. Uh, right to and including, you can do stuff such as makeup uh, and say, I want to give her more mascara and look under, under, underneath her eyes. I'm just adding a little bit more mascara. I can turn around and give her some a different eye shadow. And let's give her a like a reddish eye shadow to match her to match her her top. And a little bit of shine to that eye shadow and I can have different styles of shape, a blended eye shadow. Her eyes doesn't this particular picture doesn't show it very well. But let's do a full crease, a smoky eye look, much more over the eye. Uh, a full crease sort of sticks out a little bit more. You see the difference over here. Let me just turn it on and off so you can see it. Do you see the difference in her eye? See the red? Okay, and then, you know, a little bit of blush. I'm adding a lot, but you see the, the, the color of the blush, and I can change the color of the blush, or so on and so forth. Add a lot of eyeliner. Look at the, towards the nose, the eyeliner is getting more. So you can do a lot of stuff here. I mean, you can just play with this. Um, 
eyebrow pencil. Well, that's way too much. And, and the eyebrow is wrong. I would have to readjust the eyebrow to where it really I, sh I want it. Come on, get that back. And the intention is not to show you these products uh, or to, to tell you this is what you need. These are just tools that, that really speed things up if you want to do them. I'm not, it's not doing a good job on the eyebrow, but I'm not playing with it uh, a whole lot. So you can do a fair amount with these, these images. And it's really, really glams up the photos in, in a hurry. So if you're doing a lot, these save you a lot of time because you can just do this, this. And once you've got a formula that you like, you can turn around and, and save the preset and say, okay, for Caitlin, I really like this. I'm going to call this my, my Caitlin, you know, setup. But there's a whole bunch of original ones that, that, that come with the product where you want subtle makeup or, you know, no sculpting the face or salt sculpting or, um, Let's see, you know, you've got sort of a, you know, a natural look makeup, a subtle makeup, a more contouring type makeup where you've, you're adding, you know, more highlights to the cheeks, etc. You know, a more, a very bold light. Ooh, that's a little bold. So a lot of different looks. Well, there's a, a lot of blue in the eyes there. So you have all of these, these presets that you can set to, to, to save you time. All right. And. I want to get to the hair because the hair is always an interesting one and I know Vu had some questions there. And where is the hair? So the hair again for this this type of product it, it highlights the hair and you can do things like hair volume. Let me just go back out and right about there somewhere and if you look at the hair volume you know, I want to show, give her more hair or less hair so it can amplify the hair. And there's actually ways of getting into the hair where you can turn around and say, go to hair tidying mode. And it's supposed to spend a little bit of time removing some of the, the hairs that are crisscrossed and, the, and, and, and so on. And you can say, fill in the hair shadows if you want. You can smooth the hair if you want. And it's, it's just, it's a cleanup process. And it's a little slow, but it, it actually that went faster than I thought. But it, it cleans those things up. But to remove the hair, you typically have to go out to a, a technique called um, frequency separation. Now, is anybody familiar with that? I'm seeing no, 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 no. Okay. So frequency separation is, uh, I'll get out of this plugin. And... Portrait Pro is one of the more sophisticated products that gives you all of this stuff with, with makeup and so on and so forth. Whereas uh, On One, Capture One, and how about the one you use, Vu? Does it have any any uh, facial reconstruction capability? Uh, no. Uh, no. No? So there's a before and after, by the way, just so you can see what we did. And it's, it's subtle. And it only affects the face because this product finds the face and just adjusts the face. It leaves the rest of your photo alone unless you ask it to. But you know, we, the eyes have been brightened, the skin's changed a little bit. You can even do things like you know, darken one side. Let's say you had your flash set too high, you can actually adjust the the, the lighting ratios on the on the forehead. And if you didn't alter the face and make a wider lot wider or lower, you can actually play with the the intensity of this, right? You can just say this is zero, this is a hundred percent, and this is kind of like portrait professional applied at let's say sixty one percent. So it's kind of an, an in between. Okay, so um, how are we doing on time? Yeah, a little bit more time. So uh, frequency separation is a way of taking your photo and breaking it up into texture and color. And texture and color are very separate, and you can work with them in independent layers. So I can send you guys this little macro. There's a, there's a, a whole series of things that you can do. But if I push play... It asks me to blur this just enough so I'm losing some detail. So, you know, that's way too much. And, and, you know, right around here somewhere, my default is usually around eight. And I can, I just want to be able to make sure that I'm not seeing some texture in the skin. I, you know, that's, I'm, that's about right. I'm just like the freckles are there and now they're not there. So hit okay. 
and it finishes and voila so it's, it's created it's created this is my original image from portrait pro actually I'll, I'll just label that as PP <clears throat> and this is my original coming in and now these layers here were created by a macro one of them is low frequency which is the same thing as color high frequency is the same thing as texture so I'm gonna come over here and I'll show you just the texture this is what you're seeing you're just seeing lines and freckles and so on whereas if I look at this guy this is just color okay it's been averaged out so that you know things are, are, are averaged out but if you bring the two of them together Oops, stupid. And I'll do that and turn that on. So if I take the whole thing off and on, whoops, and do, 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 there, there. All right, so if I take this whole thing off and on, nothing's changing. I, I'm removing and, and adding this whole group and nothing changes. So it's, it's a exact replica of what you had but separate it out into texture and color. So if I want to, I can go now and I can do something like, I'm gonna remove, oops, I'm gonna use this guy over here. I'm gonna take this freckle, I'm gonna take it away. And the color remains, but the freckle and texture is gone. If I take this one away, there was both a little bit of color and a little bit of texture there. But if I take this hair away, I can just take away essentially the texture of the hair and not have to worry about the color. So I, I can play with things very carefully and I can do some very sophisticated editing by taking away little things at a time and I can decide what I'm what I'm going to keep. And there's another little hair over here. Take that away. That take away. So I'm using just this texture layer or this high frequency layer, and I'm removing just the things that I want to remove. What? There's a little bit of a hair just on her lip there. Now this would have been really hard to do in. In Lightroom, and here's a, like a whole little hair right here. Whoops. And I'm just playing with that. So I mean, I'm 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 really fussing with this. Uh, there's another little hair over here. If you tried to do this in Photoshop Heal tool, you often end up with with smudges and blurs and things like that. Nothing wrong with the Heal tool. It's actually gotten much better over the years. And you can do a lot of stuff. And so there we go. And there's extra little hair over here, which I can get rid of. All right now, if I want to soften color, you were talking about um, the, the, the shine of Ooh. I can take a color and whoops. So I'm using the low frequency or the color one and I can take this color and I just picked up this color. I hit the, the, the eyedropper tool and I went and picked up this color right here. And then I can just start applying that in other areas. So I'm, I'm darkening it and I can reduce the flow if I don't want it to be too much and I can just kind of just paint over. And what I'm doing is I'm adding darker color. Actually over here when I added it, it was lighter than what was there before. So I actually started here, I'm making it darker, but if I go over here, I'm making it lighter because this is already darker. So if, I, if I'm not sure whether I'm painting too high or too dark, I can actually say darken. So it only darkens if it's darker, but if I paint where it's already darker, then nothing happens. So that way I can, it can be sure that I'm just darkening things. I'll do the opposite, just for demonstration. I will click over here to something that's very white and I'll start saying, try to lighten. Do, 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 here, lighten. Come on, there, lighten. So now I can just paint in various places and, and I'm, I'm lightening whatever I want to lighten. But I'm not erasing the texture that's underneath. The freckles are still there. 
That's probably not nice. I'll just undo all of that. So I have a fair amount of control. And is this, does she have any anything on her blouse? Okay, so here's a good example. So I've got, I sometimes have a dress or something like that that's got some creases. So I, I, I've got shadows and creases that I want to eliminate. I can take a color and I can just blur it. And there's the dark spot gone. I'm just, I'm just taking this color and I'm smearing it. And I'm just removing I'm just removing, oops, I, I, I hit the wrong key. And I'm just removing that. So if you look at it before and after, see, I just removed some of those shadows just by spreading the color around. So I can probably do the same thing up here. And I want to take some of this color. Yep. I want to take some of this color and just push it into the nose. And so I'm just I'm removing some of the shine by, by just taking the color next to it and just pushing it over. So I'm just kind of smearing the color around if you want. But even though I'm smearing pixels at this layer, my texture is still still there. So you can play you can do a fair amount of very sophisticated editing with with this uh, these techniques. So if I'm extrapolating this correctly, and since I'm like trying to yeah. like pleasant to walk, is this how I I would use this would technique use this to get essentially get rid of the stretch marks and celluloid, celluloid, the celluloid, right? Oh yeah, yeah, celluloids, stretch marks on a maternity shoe, that kind of stuff. You, you very very easy to get rid of that kind of stuff. So I've got a little bit of a patch of skin here that that's kind of a little bit awkward. So I could turn around and say, well, I've got some light patches. I'm going to try to darken some of that. Whoops, there we go. And I'm just going to kind of just move some of this this this, uh, this color around. I'm on the right right one. And I can move the things around. And let's try it this way. Brush, color, and I don't want lighten, I want darken. Come on. I'm trying to just even out some of this uh, this coloring over here. And I'm just trying to just even out some of the color. Oops. So this is before and after. And this may be a little too much. I might want to lighten that a little bit. So it's it's uh, it's very very powerful for that. And let me just see if I can give you an example of what would be a good example. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's say she had I don't know purple fingernails or something and, and, and you didn't want that there right you could take this color and I have two layers that are going on I can take this layer and I can I can take this pink and I'm stretching it over the fingernail now I've stretched it over the fingernail but maybe it went too far right do you see that yeah yeah so I went too far and I, I made the, the finger funny so I can bring This color layer is the same as that color layer, but this one's hidden. So I can bring back, if I get rid of it, I can bring back the original one. So I'm going to bring back the original one selectively. So I'm going to paint. This is a way more sophisticated than I planned on going, but that's fine. So I'm, I'm going to bring the original one back. If I bring it too far back, why am I? Oh, I'm in darkened mode. There we go. If I bring it too far back, I can bring the nail back. But I can just, I take, take the color that I put in and I can just, I, I chose to extend the finger color over the fingernail and the fingernail's gone. So if you had creases like around the stomach and that kind of stuff and they were really close to the panty line, I would stretch the stomach color and then I wouldn't worry about too much of the fact that I floated over the, 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 the 
the bra or the panty line or the, the, the blouse or whatever, I would just bring the edge of the, the, the blouse back with this layer. It's probably another another session that we, we would do in more detail, but you, you'll see that I can actually, I can get very, very precise and just smear color around and then restore wherever it spilled over. All right, uh, let's see if I can give you a, whoops. Uh, whoops, uh, let's give you another example here. Okay, so let's get to the hair because I think that's one of the things I wanted to show you. So the hair is mostly texture. So I'm going to go to the texture layer and I'm going to start either do what I was doing earlier, get rid of that hair there. I can just kind of just get rid of that there because it's kind of distracting. You don't want to copy some other texture. And here I can just kind of just, I'm just getting rid of some of these stray hairs. And it's a little tedious. If I don't want to do it individually by hair, I can grab this blurry texture, which is nothing specific, and I can just clone that. I can just say, grab this area over here and just paint. Whoops. I want to paint just the current layer. I don't want to paint everything above it. I just want to paint the current layer. So I'm just copying from here, and I'm just going to paint. A little bit of paint there, a little bit of paint there. And, and whatever color is left underneath is, is pretty much still staying the same. I'll just copy from over here. And that's a pretty fast way to eliminate all of this strafe, uh, this um, extra hair. Not that we're, we're too worried about it, but if it was a nice white background and, and you thought it was a little bit too, too distracting, you can do something like that. And there we go. All right. And so does that give you an idea how to remove stray hair very quickly? Yeah. <laughs> or, or very, uh, without spending a lot of time? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I'll send you guys a, a link with, uh, this, this little macro, it comes with two forms. One's a 16-bit, another 8-bit. I've actually enhanced it. It came from um, Pix and Perfect, which is a really good uh, lecture on um, YouTube. And he provides this free, so I'm, I'm going to share it to you with the, the original site where I got it, just to give him credit. But I've added a couple of other pieces to it. I've enhanced the macro. So in addition to just Normally you just get this low frequency, this high frequency one. I've added a duplicate with the way of, of being able to bring back the original. So if I smear color too far, I can bring it back. And then I've also added a dodging and burning layer. So this is just a two curves. And if I want to just quickly give her some highlights, I can hit the mask, hit the brush, paint with white, and, and I can just kind of just add some make sure I'm painting with a good flow here and I'm just kind of I'm painting little bits of white and, and if you look you see how th there's little highlights it's very subtle right so I'm just adding a few whoops and just well, come on go there brush what why am I not able to oh I, I removed the the, vi the visibility so I'm just adding a little bit of highlights uh, shadows, I want to maybe reduce some of the shine on our forehead. I'm just going to, whoops, I'm going the other, opposite way here. There we go. And get rid of this. So very, I, I'm darkening, that's way too much, but I will reduce the intensity of that. But I'm actually just putting a little bit of uh, extra contouring in there. And I can just, you know, darken her hand a little bit. I'm going super fast here, just playing around with it. 
these flowers are a little too dark, too too bright. Just get you know darken that. So I can just play with 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 pieces of things, and then if I want to highlight something, go back to this one, and and just make this a little bit brighter. Come on, there we go. And get rid of that. So I can play with with a lot of different elements of the uh, the photo. You just darken some of the leaves that I, I think are, are distracting. And you're just you're painting and, and, and playing with with certain areas. Now in Lightroom, I you know I just draw a big circle and and put it back. <clears throat> and if you're in Photoshop and you want to do something that you would normally be able to do in Lightroom. You can certainly still do that. I'm just going to take a snapshot of this picture. This is a special control, Alt, Shift, E. <laughs> and it takes a picture of, of all the layers below it. So now I have a new layer, which reflects everything. And I can just say Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And here, when I'm in Camera Raw Filter, I get all the controls that I had in, in, in uh, Lightroom. So if you like the Lightroom type capabilities, you can do some of the things that we were doing earlier. And just kind of just darken the picture a little bit, warm it up a little bit. And now I'm, I have all the facilities I had in Lightroom and all the tools I had in Lightroom are now in Photoshop as well. So you can, you can mix and match and, and use the, the, the tools that you want. So this is when we came into Photoshop, it looked like this. And now it looks like that. So just a little subtleness on the sleeve there, the hands, a little bit of the eyes. Some of the leaves are changed. A lot of little subtle changes. So we talked about Lightroom and how to make some changes. We exported it to Facebook, uh, to, to Facebook, to, to uh, I'll, I'll close this. And we're now sort of out of Photoshop and it's going to return back to Lightroom. Uh, the last thing I need to do is re-export this picture, just like I did the um, the original proofs. So it's just saving this now, 35%. So while this is happening, any questions on what we did in Photoshop? Spontaneous burst of silence. <laughs> Very good. Very, very fast. Very fast. Very good. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, we're I mean, covering a lot of material, and the, the the goal is just to kind of give you an idea of, of some of the things that you can do in, in the portrait world. Um, if you don't know how to do dodging and burning, and you've never done frequency separation, whatnot, it's it's probably a little overwhelming. But you have an idea of, oh, there's a way of doing this, <laughs> and the goal is to be able to then research that and, and and go look for it. So I'm back in Lightroom. I have a filter that says "Show me all of my PSD and TIFF files." So I only have one Photoshop image, and it's this one, the one we just edited. <clears throat> so I would right-click on this, export, and this time, instead of saying proof, I'm going to say signed. And it goes into my folder. And there's my finished image with my signature. And I'm ready to send that to Dropbox and send it to the client and say, here's your selected images, hope you're happy. Terrific. Terrific. Oops. Ta-da. <laughs> Anyways, now if you guys have any questions, just send me an email or whatever. I'm happy to uh, to give you a hand. And uh, thank you again for participating and hope this was all very worthwhile. And Denise, sorry, I'm not sure what happened. I sent you a, a link with all of this stuff. Um, it was in the model release. Did you get the model release? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think you said I yes. Okay, yeah, it was it was it was in there, but that's okay. No problem. I'm sorry we we didn't get to you in time, but uh, I have a recording of this. I'll put it up and I'll send you guys an email with the the link. So if you need to review something, you can fast forward and not listen to all the boring parts. <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks again. Hope to see you as more meetups. Stay safe. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Terrific. Thanks. Terrific. It's always fun, Mike. Always fun, Mike. <laughs> Thank you very much.